As governments unleash massive stimulus packages to kickstart pandemic hit economies, are we aiming for a green recovery post COVID-19? Are the blueprints going to shape a low carbon future or lock the world back into a fossil fuel dependent system? Joining us this morning, architect Romulo Nati, executive chairman and CEO of listed property developer Italpinas Development Corporation. Hi, Romulo. Good morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I guess I want to start with, is there evidence to prove that green infrastructure actually creates more jobs and prosperity than brown infrastructure? That should make green recoveries more financially compelling at this time. Yeah, I think that depends from the market. If the market is receiving well uh, green product, green services, uh, uh, I, I'm sure that this will help to boost the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm quite optimistic that the trend that already started before the COVID-19 uh, will uh, be boosted by what happened with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And what about health-wise? Uh, how are green designs better for health, better at preventing possibly the next pandemic? Um, you know, uh, studies have been proven that prove that uh, uh, having uh, being exposed to natural light and natural ventilation can uh, help uh, to fight the transmission of the virus. Um, we also know uh, from the experience of uh, SARS in uh, Hong Kong that aircon instead uh, can uh, can uh, uh, improve the the uh, uh, spreading of the virus. So. Uh, in terms of green architecture, so uh, a building that can offer uh, easy access to open spaces, uh, so natural light and natural ventilation, I'm sure that this one can help uh, because we will uh, use less uh, uh, aircon and we will, um, and people, I mean, uh, customer um, will, will have the chance to live uh, uh, outside. Uh, I don't know about uh, yourself, but uh, for example, myself, when there was the, the lockdown, I had a very difficult time uh, living in Makati and having just a very small space where I could go outside like a terra. So open spaces will definitely help uh, uh, to fight the virus. Mm -hmm. Romulo, if the stock market is any indication, um, it appears that green architecture hasn't really caught up and caught on. Why do you think so? What's holding it back? Um, you know, I think the stereotype that green architecture, green building is expensive uh, because this has been the experience so far. Uh, I can proudly say that with Italpinas Development Corporation, IDC, we have been able to provide uh, green buildings at an accessible price in emerging locations in the Philippines. So I think it's a matter of uh, positioning the product, product uh, to the, for the right market, make it, make it accessible in terms of pricing, so in terms of logistics, and, and everything will come uh, naturally. At least that's the experience that we are having with the IDC. Um, as of the moment, mm -hmm. yes. For IDC, when you say accessible price, um, what sort of premium are we looking at? Because the prices are not the same. Uh, no, actually, in, in our case, uh, the prices are similar, very similar to regular building without uh, green features. Of course, it depends by the kind of green buildings we talk about about because there are green buildings with uh, uh, active green features and green buildings like ours with uh, passive green features which are mainly featured embedded in the design so what we do we increase natural ventilation we create shade we also produce a, a certain amount of energy through solar panels but in this way we are able to keep the construction cost uh, lower and so that we are able to to uh, to provide a product at an accessible price to to the end user. So this is possible. It's just a matter of changing the approach to design and construction. Mm -hmm. um, IDC managed to have a good first quarter. What's the outlook for the rest of the year, though? Because the peak of COVID for the Philippines was in second quarter, and taking into consideration uh, that you have a drive to develop not in existing cities but in emerging up and coming cities and targeting the new rising middle class. Yep, uh, actually I'm happy that you are asking that because just uh, uh, yesterday we filed our ITR with BIR for the second quarter and I'm happy to see and to say that our net profit increased almost 60% compared to last year, the second quarter of last year. Um, uh, and, and, and so we are extremely happy for the second quarter I'm talking about. We already have been growing of course, uh, 2000, 2019 compared to 2018, 
uh, for the entire year, first quarter, 60% higher than last year, and also second quarter, around 60% higher of uh, uh, second quarter last year. So, I, I mean, uh, um, uh, we are prov proving that uh, green buildings in emerging locations uh, are the way to go. Mm -hmm. Romola, to what do you attribute this big, impressive spike? It, it seems counterintuitive because all other property developers are very worried that, you know, with COVID-19, people are uh, looking around less or going out, looking at these um, new properties less. Um, there's also the looming recession that's causing a lot of people to tighten their hold on their purse. To what do you attribute this big spike in your performance in the second quarter? Yeah, um, you know, mainly I think uh, first because we are in uh, uh, emerging locations, we are not in the mega city. So I think that people during this period of the pandemic, uh, pandemic experience the desire of being outside congested cities. Um, in uh, you know, we our projects are in uh, in Cagayan de Oro in northern Mindanao and in uh, Santo Tomas in Batangas. And this can be uh, one of the reasons. The other reason is that uh, during the lockdown, we have been hearing and, and, and reading about staying home, stay home. So I also think that uh, people uh, are, are starting to understand that having investing in an asset that is their own home is more important than ever. And uh, finally, investing in a, in, a, in a unit, in a green building with, again, the green feature we just have been mentioned about, is going to be a value added. So in, we really had a spike in our reservation, I think mainly for these three reasons. Mm -hmm. Romulo, if you look at the big picture, uh, Europe is setting aside a quarter of its 750 billion euro recovery fund for climate action. South Korea's Green New Deal is also part of its plan to spend about $110 billion to save their country from recession. Indonesia just announced a $1 billion solar power project. I mean, from your perspective, how can the Philippine government help and incentivize the green push? Um... I, I think Philippine government already started to, uh, even again before the pandemic, started to have a massive infrastructure uh, investment program, which I think is the main drive, driver uh, for uh, uh, development and so to grow the economy. Um, I, I hope that the, 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 the Philippine government will focus uh, uh, more in giving incentives and uh, uh, um, for green product, green building, green green services, uh, very dedicated kind of uh, uh, investment because this will for sure uh, help the economy uh, to redevelop in a green uh, way. Uh, uh, but I'm quite confident that the Philippines uh, will uh, will uh, will take this this uh, this path. So I guess uh, final question, Romulo. You're not writing off 2020. It's gonna be a. Ba it sounds like it's gonna be a banner year for IDC, huh? Yeah, actually, I'm very excited. And uh, if you remember, you were with us during the IPO in two, in uh, a few years ago. I think it was 2015. And, I was. Uh, I remember, yes. It, 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 it is a very nice experience to work in the Philippines with my Filipino partner, Jojo Leviste. Uh, we are uh, uh, very happy to see that despite difficult moment, the company is growing and uh, we are working hard with the, the, the team, uh, with, the, uh, with uh, all the people. And of course, we thank our customers and also our investors. Uh, and uh, it's, yes, it's a very nice journey that I'm having in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the IPO. It was in 2015. I did cover it uh, five years yeah. since. For your shareholders, what do you tell them? Because the share price of IDC, after spiking to around nine pesos in late 2017, has gone back down. Are we going to see yeah. some uh, appreciation in share prices soon yeah. as this yes, picks it, up? You know, you need to consider that we issue uh, two times stock dividends. So one time was 35%, another time was 45%. So the price that is today, uh, I think we are around uh, 1.6, 1.7 pesos per share, has to be added, 80% uh, uh, of that value has to be added because we increase the number of shares. So the price uh, at the moment in this difficult situation is almost uh, close to the 360 uh, uh, pesos uh, uh, based on the old number of shares. So the price is not so bad. I think we are holding well. Uh, we are actually outperforming many other uh, development companies. I think Ital Pinas is a growth story. So uh, investors have not just to be calm, just wait, because this is a difficult morning, but uh, 
we are going back to to have a very and a very excited uh, share price. I have no doubt about it. And and again, the the second quarter is showing that Italpinas is doing great despite everything. Great to have a good story early in the morning. Thank you very much, Romulo, thank for you. joining us. And may you continue to defy gravity this year. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning to everybody.